Hey everybody, this is Gregory from Dappy Diversity. So welcome back to this multi-part tutorial series where I'm showing you how to build a full stack blockchain application. In this video, we're gonna continue building out the client side app that we started in the last video. All right, so before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and click the like button down below. And as always, if you wanna learn how to become a highly paid blockchain developer, you need to join my free training on my website over at dappydiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. Now I wanna pick up where we left off in the last video, right? So the last video we basically you know, fetched our account from the blockchain and uh, showed it on the page. And we also you know, fetched our smart contract, the marketplace smart contract and logged out of the console here. Okay, so that's two big things. Um, so what I wanna do now is actually store the uh, marketplace inside the state. So we'll say uh, const, well actually this, we'll say this.set state. And we'll say marketplace and uh, equal to marketplace. But in JavaScript, we can do this shorthand like this, boom. And what I also wanna do is uh, update loading. So for now, um, loading is always true. We can't really tell in our app yet. You'll see that more later. But what I'm gonna do is say this set state loading equals false okay so by default it's true and now it's false we don't see any consequence of that yet but whenever we are um basically showing the blockchain data once we start actually adding code here we're going to like show a loader and we'll show the loader if loading is set to true and if not we'll set it to false okay that's what this does this and then this okay so now let's actually uh clear out some of this we don't want to show all this boilerplate code down here uh, we have the nav bar, but we want to actually create some content inside of here. Let's clear that out, go back to our browser and check. All right, now it's empty, that's what we want. So let's uh, go ahead and sketch out some HTML. We will uh, use a div here. We'll say div, div uh, id equals content. We'll say main, actually, main. And we'll do this. And let's do an h1 tag. What we're gonna do is actually create a place to add a product. That's what we'll do in this video. Say add product. That'd be the first kind of thing that they can do inside the marketplace. So we'll save this. All right, so it didn't even work yet, I don't know why. Oh, I see. It's because essentially it's hidden. It's underneath the nav bar. So we need to create some extra, some extra stuff stuff here inside of bootstrap okay so we're gonna wrap this let's call this content like i said originally i'm gonna add some code here all right so this is gonna be what we'll see and then we're going to also close this out like this so you could pause the video really fast if you want to just see this all right so let's go back to the page and there we go awesome so ab product, it was there before, it was just hidden up inside of here. So Bootstrap relies upon, you know, this object, this idea of containers, uh, rows, uh, this grid system with, you know, column, large, stuff like that, okay? So I've created a lot of this for you, so you don't have to think about it, um, but it's gonna make it look nice on the page, and here's where we're gonna add our product, okay? And now just like we refactored this nav bar, I wanna refactor this entire section where we're gonna add all of our app code, uh, you know, to, to show all this stuff on the page, I want to put it in a subcomponent as well. So we're going to create a new one. Uh, we call this main, main.js, capital M. All right, so let's actually just copy what we did with the nav bar. Go over to main, paste it in. Instead of nav bar, we'll call it main. All right, say M-A-I-N. And let's take out all the code. And let's just paste in what we did here. All right, so uh, just this part. Copy that. Main.js, we'll do this. All right, add product, and we'll save this. So we will import main just like we did navbar. Navbar, and then main. Main. And then we'll put main here. Main. Go back to our browser, and it still works. Awesome. 
So now what we can do is I want to hide content on the page if the app is loading. And I just mentioned that a minute ago, right? We, we set loading state to false here, and it's true by default. So basically, whenever load blockchain data is done, we want to say, hey, our app is loaded. Show all the content on the page. And we want to show a loader if it's still loading, okay? So we'll do that like this. We're going to use a uh, ternary operator in JavaScript. We'll basically just say... Uh, we we'll use curly braces to run JavaScript inside of here. We'll say this dot state, right? Dot loading, right? We're keeping track of loading inside of this state object, and we'll say question mark. Uh, if it's uh, if it is, we'll show a loader. If not, we will show this component right here. All right. We could just say uh, we we could do this. We could we could say like you know. I'm, gonna, I'm basically going to create this right here. All right, so I'm going to put a, boom, a div that works as a loader. All right, so let's go back to our app and refresh. All right, so you can see that happen. There's a loader, boom, and then it works. Do it one more time. All right, you see it? So that's how that works. So now I want to refactor this so that it looks a little nicer. Basically, I'm going to you know put some space here, and then I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this on the same column as this, all right? And then I'm going to do it just like that. All right, so that's a way you can use a multi-line ternary in JavaScript to do that. So basically, a ternary is just like an if-then statement. So if this, then this, else do this, okay? Just like uh, this, if this, then this, all right? So I'll save that, go back. Still works, awesome. So now we have this main component uh, that we can use and we'll pass values down to this later, but now we don't have to worry about uh, cluttering up this view. This is mostly responsible for loading up the blockchain data and stuff like that, and then this is where we'll actually interact with the, uh, the, the template code. All right, so now what I want to do is just get started with some basic templates that we're going to add to uh, inside of here, all right? So what we want to do is show a form to add a product, and then we're going to show a table to list out all the products on the page, okay? So I'm just going to paste in some template code that we're going to wire up step by step. So this part isn't super important. Like, I don't necessarily need to teach you how to write HTML in this tutorial. I mostly want to show you how to work with the blockchain. So I'm going to paste this in, all right? And you can get this in the code example down below. There's nothing special about this. This is just HTML code. We're going to change all this later, but this is just going to give you some placeholder code to see uh, what we're going to actually create, okay? So here you go. Here's a form to add the product. I'll have a name, a price. You can, you know, submit it, and it'll add the product on the blockchain. It's not going to do it yet. We actually have to create the functionality for that. And then here's where we're going to list out all the products that people can buy. It'll show who owns it. Um, it'll show the price, the name of the product, and the ID, okay? And this isn't really on the blockchain right now. It's just placeholder code. We're going to modify all this. Like these buttons don't work or anything, right? We're going to wire all this up in this video and also the next video. But in this video, we're going to concentrate on making this form work so we can actually list products on the blockchain as the, uh, the seller, right? And the next video, we're going to change it to the buyer and try to buy the products that the seller has listed, okay? So let's do that. The first thing we want to do is actually wire up this form. So right now, the form is pretty bare. It doesn't really do anything. We just see a form here with some fields. But what we want to do is whenever the form is submitted is, you know, tell the blockchain to add the product that we entered here, okay? And in order to do that, we need a function, on the smart, we need to call the function on the smart contract that we created in the previous tutorials, uh, the add product function, right? So let's go ahead and do that, all right? So we're going to create a new function inside of React here, inside of our component, just below constructor. We'll call this uh, create product. And we'll pass in the name, price, this is just like uh, the name of the price and the solidity function that we created in the previous tutorials. So the first thing that we'll do is tell uh, React that we're going to be loading this state. 
Anytime we want to interact with the blockchain, we're going to tell React that we're loading. All right. And we can, um, we can, we can create the product like this. We'll say this.state.marketplace. All right. That reads the smart contract at a state that we stored here. This is the deployed smart contract, the Web3 contract. Say methods, all right, that exposes the functions on the smart contract. Say create product. Oh, sorry. And we'll say the name, price, pass those in. All right. And it, that's not enough just to call the function, right? What we actually have to do is say send and pass in the metadata. So who's it from? From this.state.account. And also, um, yeah, that's actually enough. So there we go. Boom. So then what we're going to do is say uh, once. So it's basically going to have a user promise here. So once receipt. Pass in receipt. This is the transaction receipt that comes back from the uh, blockchain. This state. Loading. Oh, sorry, this, sorry, set state. Loading, false. Okay. So that's how we're going to create the product. This is a function that we'll use. All right, so now what we want to do is actually call this function down inside of this component whenever the form is submitted. Okay. So we need to do a couple of things. We actually need to pass the function down. We're going to do it with props, just like we did with the nav bar. See, we pass the account down with props here. We can also pass functions down with props. So we'll do that like this. We'll say create product equals this dot create product. All right. I'm actually going to, yeah, I'll just leave that that way for now. So in order for React to know what this dot create product is, we need to bind it to the component. All right, this is a really critical step. It's a it's a gotcha. <laughs> if you, uh, yeah, it's easy to forget to do this. So don't worry if you fail. Uh, I've done this many times before. So you have to do this dot create product equals this dot create product bind this. All right, and that's how you let React know that this create product is the same thing as this. All right. So we're going to pass that down to our main uh, component with uh, that. And now we can actually call this function inside of here. So we'll go to the code and we'll basically call that function anytime this form is submitted. So what's really nice is React allows us to have an, a run on submit handlers uh, inside our component really easily like this say on submit. And we'll say event. All right. And so we can just break this up like this to execute our code inside of here. And we can actually call um, this.props.create product inside of here. All right. We just need to pass in a name and a price, just like the function expects here. All right. So a name and a price. So that's all we really have to do is basically just say on submit, uh, call create product. So now the next steps are to fetch the name from this field and the price from this field. So how do we do that in React? Well, uh, React manages the values of these forms of something called refs. Okay, and we can assign the refs like this. So after text, we'll say ref, um, we'll say, We'll sign it like this, say input. I'll say this.product name equals input. All right. And the same thing for here. Uh, we can say this.product price equals input. All right. 
So whenever we fill those out, React is going to use this ref inside this component, and we can access that inside of here like this. We'll say const name equals uh, this dot product name, All right? But we want to call value because it's a form field, all right? And we can do the same thing for the price. This dot product, all right? And then we can say uh, value, okay? So then we can just pass in the product price like this. So we've got the name, we've got the price. And anytime this form is submitted, we can uh, call that function. But there's one more thing we have to do, all right? We, uh, this price and this thing, we're going to allow people to store it in Ether, right? So 10 Ether, 1 Ether, something like that. We want to store that value in way. Because remember, anytime we use our Solidity smart contracts and we transfer Ether around, it's always done in way, right? So we can convert it to way like this. So say uh, window.web3.utils to way. This will look very familiar from the tests. Uh, this dot product price dot value to string. All right, it's important that you call to string there and say ether. All right, so there you go. There's your price in uh, way. All right, so you got the name and the price. So I think that we've done everything. Let's just go ahead and try it out. If we haven't done everything, <laughs> then uh, trust me, our app's going to tell us. So we'll go back here and we'll say, uh, you know, iPhone. Let's just say, let's just do this. Do Rolex Submariner. And for the price, we'll say 30 ETH. All right, so add product. All right, so it didn't like something. Let's figure out what it was. All right, so I think I know what's going on here. Um, so first, I forgot to do this. So say event, prevent default. All right. Go back to the page here. Let's try to add a product again. Say my product one ETH. Add product, and boom, there we go. We see an error. So this dot state dot loading is not a function. So that was just a dumb mistake that I made, guys. Sorry about that. Um, so this should be this uh, set state. Yeah. So hopefully that'll work. Let's try it again. Let's do Rolex Submariner. Let's say 30 ETH, add product. And boom, we see a MetaMask confirmation come up. All right. Awesome. So this is a good sign. Let's uh, click confirm. All right. Let's sell it. And there we go. I saw a MetaMask confirmation come up. It came off uh, off screen for me on my second monitor, uh, but I'll refresh the page and show you that, yeah, we're all good. So let's just prove that it worked. Let's go to main.js, or sorry, app.js, and let's actually get the product count. It should be one, all right? So, you know, we, uh, we could do that like this. So just say const product count equals await marketplace methods product count, right? Just like we did methods create product, we can do product count methods product count count and say call right so call, there's you can do call methods in web3 or send methods right these send transactions these just read data right so a call method is what we want the console.log product count it should just be one because we've only created one product so far all right boom there we go we can say product count to string or to number just depends on what you want to see Boom, there we go, awesome. All right guys, so that's it for this video. We have successfully created a product on the blockchain uh, with this client-side application with React.js and Web3 uh, for our decentralized marketplace. All right, so you can check out the code examples and the link down below. Um, so that's all I got for today. So be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Click the like button down below. And as always, if you want to learn how to become a highly paid blockchain developer, you just need to join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.